gone through to identify units to offer in winter uh, is the process we're going through to offer units in semester two, and that is that we've got you know, some exhaustive um, data out of the university system about every one of you to make sure that we know that the units that you actually need are going to be offered. And so that's, that's the basis on which we've determined that list that Cathy's just referred to, the, the winter term ones, and it's the same process that we're going through for the semester two offerings. So um, there are some units that are currently listed as being offered for semester two, um, uh, but, we, uh, but that, that's still in the process of revision. So there may still be some extra units that appear in the, um, on the university's database that, don't currently, that aren't currently there. So if there's a unit that you need, that doesn't appear there, it may well be that we just haven't got round to putting that up, but we're in that process. At, at, the, yep. at the moment, our focus was on winter. Yep. yep. Thanks. Thank you, David. And I know that you'll appreciate that with the um, existing staff that we have, so we have X number of staff members as well, and we're trying to, um, to teach the old units as well um, and staff the new units as well at the same time. So uh, just like in any workplace, we're actually trying to manage quite a lot of things um, in a set period of time with the resources that we have. Um, but we will be able to make um, a match for you. There's no problem with that. Um, are there any questions at the moment just about the unit availability? Anything that I haven't covered? Because it'd be great if you could um, just feed back any information. This is the first um, information session we've run like this and I'm considering that it actually is a really good feature of what we should be doing in terms of best practice. Um, for providing information to students. So if there's anything else that after today's session we haven't covered, if you can please just send an email or come and see me, I'll write it down after the event. I'll pass me a note old fashioned style, something like that will be great. And that will just help feed into the process for improving this information provision to students and interaction with students so that we can do the best thing for you um, and work together. Okay, the, um, this is something that Students, obviously, we only really think about towards the end of our journey. When we're on the homeward stretch, which is where we're at, um, what do I need to do in order to complete? Often I hear students talk about the word graduate. What do I need to do to graduate? Before graduation, that's the celebration at the end. Um, and if you've been to a graduation ceremony, you know that you know, it's, a, it's a lovely occasion. It's where you get that official testama and official certificate on the stage, all dressed up. It's lovely. Celebrate with champagne or something afterwards. And it is a celebration. Before you get to the celebration, though, you need to actually do what we call as course complete. Course completion is the boring bit where you actually have to go again and just mark off, check off against the rules and requirements of your degree, specific to your degree, and make sure that you have attended to and checked off every single bit of that requirement. So that goes back to the unit and course database. If you put in your course code into the course database, you'll see all those rules. For your degrees, though, you'll need to go back to the year 2014. So we're going back to the future there, channel Michael J. Fox and you will find Back to the Future in the Course and Unit Database. Some people might be doing that now. Oh, no, just writing notes. Um, and if you like, later on, I can go through that on the big screen. We can do it together. So remind me to do that, if you would. Um, so you go back to the future, to the beginning of, you know, course offering for your degree. That's where you can check off the rules and requirements that are on the course database. From there, you can check yourself off. Um, you can double check that you, against your, what you know you've studied, against your transcript, have covered everything that you're required to cover for your degree. The other way, to, oh, and also, um, you need to go into the um, identify yourself, or I call flag yourself for course completion, by going in through the student portal into MyUC. When you log in there as a student, um, your course code will be there, all of those things. Just double check all those details again, your mailing address, your contact information, mobile phone number. Please make sure all those things are correct because if I need to phone you, uh, I'll look to that database. Um, and occasionally, mobile phone numbers are incorrect, so it's kind of um, it's good for us to keep in contact that way. But you, uh, identify yourself for course completion. Then that uh, triggers student progress and graduation to do the same sorts of things that you'll be doing in the background too. It's going through and double-checking the rules and requirements of your degree specific um, against what you've done already to make sure, A, you've got enough credit points, that you've covered the right units of study in the right sort of fashion, and that's all good. They take into account any variation of course requirements that we've, has been approved by the faculty. 
any advanced standing, any credit from prior degrees, anything like that. If you've um, got approval for cross-institutional studies, please make sure that all those, that evidence that you've completed those studies successfully are updated through Student Centre. So that all those little components in the background will feed into that information, say yes, done 96 credit points and every single unit that you're required to have for your degree is accounted for in some way. That's the mechanism in the background. So you can help us by identifying yourself for course completion through MyUC and having double checking yourself so you're familiar with what you should have been doing. And then you can help me when you come to advice as to where you think the gaps might be. And then I can help you much more quickly with how to fix those gaps up. Uh, any doubts about course completion or graduation in particular, the, the tail end of things, the celebration at the end of your journey, please email graduation directly and they can guide you with more specific advice. I mentioned a list of the bucket list of winter term units we have on offer. So this is a synthesised list of what's relevant for the primary ed degree. You'll notice some units, you'll notice the familiar ones from your existing degrees. You'll notice some new ones that you won't know necessarily the names of, but you can have a look at the course, the unit code and look those up on the database. Um, it's preferable though that you stick to the units from your existing degrees because there's a continuity of content, um, pedagogy that goes behind the construction of those old units or those existing units. Um, so they will be more um, in sync with what you've done previously, so it'll make more sense. Is that okay? Make, me make sense? Questions? Yep. Okay. Um, there'll be, there are flyers here, so in terms of um, the detail, and also these slides will be um, on the Moodle site as well. Some other common questions that students often ask is, I'm in an old degree, and I'm using that word with kindness and respect, the old degree. Um, do I still need to do the land type test? No, you don't have to do, don't have to do the land type test. Is that a blessing? I don't know. Um, is it a requirement? No, it's not of us. No, it's not a requirement of TQI, our local jurisdiction accrediting body. Um, they acknowledge that it wasn't built into the structure of your degree. So they let that one go. It is, however, a recommendation. We would strongly recommend it as a professional thing that you do. Um, there oughtn't to be any impediment to you passing both components, the literacy and the numeracy components of the land type test. You're all bright people. You're coming to the end. You've shown through lots of study and good grades that you actually can manage stuff. If you would like to do the land type, it's up to you to, um, to register with ASA. There's the link there. Um, and have a look, you can do the diagnostic testing, you can look at the time frames when they do, the, when they offer them, um, and all of that stuff, so, and uh, put those in. Um, it's probably advantageous when you're going for jobs to show that you've passed the land type. So we would recommend it, but it's not a requirement of your degree. Um, and as you come this last year, last semester, the last time, last part of this, the undergraduate part of your journey with us at UC, just a timely reminder of all those fantastic and free support services that are here for you, the medical and counselling in particular, um, the engagement and inclusion, inclusion and engagement group, um, should you need additional support, uh, the Ngunnawal Centre for um, Indigenous Students to help with tutorial and study skills centre, um, and the rovers based in the library. So remember all those things. And also your unit conveners, tutors, um, the all teacher education Moodle site, and all of the things off to the sides of any of those Moodle sites which are to help you with academic integrity, um, study skills, the Moodle help, all of those um, capacities of our system. So please remember those as we um, endeavour to support you as best as we can through the last part of your journey, the homeward stretch. And if you're worried that um, at any stage during this year that your course completion is at risk, this is really important particularly because you are in an, a degree that has a shelf life. So for accreditation, it's actually only accredited till the end of this year. So we can't continue to offer opportunities into January next year. We have to close them off before Christmas this year. So this is where it's very, very, very important that you keep in contact with 
me and your unit convener in any unit that you feel like you might be at risk of uh, not completing successfully. So failing or if you need to, particularly if you're in a placement unit, if there's some reason why that placement needs to be withheld for some reason beyond December, we need to transition you into the new degree. We actually have no wiggle room around that at all. So that's where you need to flag that with me as early as possible so we can uh, assist in whatever way. Um, and that assistance might by nature be um, transferring you into a new degree and then you just complete stuff next year, no problem. So it's easy to do, it's just a, a mechanism that's better if I start it earlier than leave it till later. And we'd rather people didn't get to a crisis point um, at any stage. So a calm approach is a, a better approach for success. So please, if you're, um, if you're in any doubt, obviously if it's a unit, individual unit that you're struggling with for some reason, please uh, talk to your unit convener. They'll be very amenable to a chat to discuss how to support you. Um, if it's extenuating circumstances, then we'll deal with it in another way. Um, but please keep in contact there. If you need to redo something for a reason and it's going to flow, it's going to flow over into next year, then we'll need to transition you into a new degree. Um, and that's easy to do, as I said. Uh, it just takes a bit of time. Who knows if, oh, it's, the answer's there anyway. Um, it's like a quiz. 96 credit points for a standard four-year undergraduate degree. 48 credit points if you're in a grad entry degree. So that was the other one. Um, so you need those, plus you need to meet all the course rules in order to course complete. Straightforward. When are the graduation 